Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our summer show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents a new musical play by Lawrence and Lee, a great baseball memory, Casey at the Bat, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, lovely Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, the premiere of another new operetta is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Baseball fever is running high coast to coast, on sand lots and in big league parks. And that's why we're bringing you a musical version of one of the great yarns in baseball history. Dorothy Warnshold will be a lovely strawberry blonde named Peg, and I shall be Casey, mighty Casey, in Casey at the Bat. Play ball! <laughs> why Casey struck out. I guess I ought to know, because I'm Casey. You want to know why they mention my name first when they talk about the bonehead goofs in baseball history? Well, I'll tell you. Did you ever meet a girl who made you melt inside like an ice cream cone in a kid's hand on a sunny day in the bleachers? Well, I did. Her name was Peg. She had hair that was all soft and kind of strawberry colored. We was batting a thousand, me and her. Guess I'll never forget the way we used to dance together in that big outdoor pavilion out by the lake. And the band sounded as if angels was playing. Oh, Casey, you shouldn't hold me so close. Everybody's watching us. Of course everybody's watching us. Well, that's because you're the most famous person in all of Mudville. Oh, no. It's because of you. They're all jealous because I'm dancing with the most beautiful girl in the whole United States. Oh, make like a hoop and roll away. You know what they're saying? I'll tell you. Casey, he waltzed with the strawberry blonde and the band played on. I crossed the floor with a girl he adored And the band played on But his brain was so loaded It nearly exploded The poor girl would shake with alarm He'd now leave the girl with the strawberry curls And the band played on Casey would waltz with the strawberry blonde And the band So loaded it nearly exploded. The poor girl would shake with alarm. He'd nearly the girl with the strawberry curls and the band played on. Oh, gee, gee whiz, Casey. I got something awful important to ask you, Peg. Yes, Casey. I gotta be frank with you, Peg. I, I, I ain't never gone to the plate before in a pitch like this. My knees is shaking like I was a raw rookie. Well, say anything you want to, Casey. I want you to marry me, Pip. Oh, I know I'm just a big, dumb baseball player. 
But I love you, Pete. Oh, I want to marry you, Casey. You do? Yes, but you've got to promise me one thing. Oh, anything, anything you want. You want me to hit four home runs Sunday, I'll hit five. No, Casey. I, I want you to promise me you'll only stay in Mudville for another season. Where you want to go, honey? Oh, to Philadelphia, where there's culture, libraries and art museums and, and symphony orchestras. Maybe if you marry me, you can have all the culture your little heart desires. You'll choke on culture. Well, Peg married me all right. We got hitched up 11 years ago last March 29th. You know, she's still the prettiest strawberry blonde you ever saw. I uh, forgot to mention it, though. We're still living in Mudville. Peg, she don't like that much. Me? I ain't got nothing against Mudville. It ain't one of them metropolises like Terre Haute, but I like it. But Peg, she thinks our boy Timmy, he's ten now, ain't getting no culture at all, especially around baseball players. Should have seen what happened one day in the locker room after a Tuesday afternoon game early in June. Gee, Dad, that was a keen game. Baseball's a lot more fun than long division. Why, sure it is, Timmy. Hey, how'd you like that pitcher's outside curve? Cooney and Burroughs couldn't get on to him, but you fooled him, Pop. Gee, three home runs. <laughs> well, it's an off day, Timmy. It's an off day. Hey, Hank, Joe. You yeah, Casey? Come here, will you? I want to show my boy the pleasures of baseball, even in the locker room. You know, son, you, you hear a lot about barbershop quartets. But there ain't nothing in the world as mellow as a locker room quartet. Even the cement walls like to join in. Fellas, come on, lean in close and sing it real sweet, huh? Sweet at Ola. Sweet at Ola. My Mrs. Casey, please, not in the locker room. There are gentlemen in various stages of undress. Out of my way. Ah, just as I thought. Timmy, you're playing hooky from school again. Well, Mom, I didn't exactly... I told him he could. There was a picture he hadn't seen before, and I figured as how... Just as I thought. Timmy, how do you ever expect to be educated? I don't want to be educated, Mom. I want to be a baseball player. Oh, what am I going to do with you? Mom, what good's long division? I want to learn how to pitch an outside curve. His teacher, Miss Abernathy, don't know a thing about curves. Oh, that settles it. <laughs> I'm packing up and I'm leaving you. I'm taking Timmy and we're going to Philadelphia. Oh, Peggy, you can't. I've waited 11 years to get out of the mud of Mudville, and this settles it. This is it, Casey. Fare thee well, for I must leave thee. Do not let the parting grieve thee. For the time has come for you and I to say goodbye. Peg, no. Adieu, adieu, kind friends, adieu. Not adieu. I can no longer stay with you. Peg, you gotta stay with me. Listen, please. Oh, Hang my heart on a weeping willow tree. Fare well. well. Come, Timmy. Peg. 
Jimmy, no. Oh, Hank, what am I going to do? Uh, I don't know, Casey. She won't listen to me. Yeah, I'm afraid your wife has the soul of an umpire. What would I do in Philadelphia, Hank? I like Mudville. I like playing ball here. I'm... I'm real happy here. Yeah, yeah, Casey. You can't let some dame run your life for you. Call strikes on you all the time. You're right, Hank. You're right. You gotta forget dames and play ball. For it's one, two, three strikes you're out. At the old ball game. Now here is the second act of our musical version of Casey at the Bat, starring Gordon McRae as Casey and Dorothy Warren showed as Mrs. Casey. Summer's supposed to be a happy time, a home run hitting time. But not for me, not that summer. You never seen a batting average take such a slump in all your life. You gotta think home runs before you hit them. And I was walking around in a daze like a lame bunt. Remembering how wonderful my summers used to be. With Peg at the parlor piano in the twilight. Singing to Timmy and to me. There's a time in each year that we always hold dear. Good old summer time. With the birds and the trees. And the sweet scented breezes, good old summertime. When your day's work is over, then you are in clover, and life is one beautiful rhyme. No trouble annoying, each one is enjoying the good old summertime. In the good old summer. come home to an empty house. No peg, no Timmy, no music. On the big day of the year out at the ballpark, our annual grudge game with Midtown, I just didn't have no heart to play at all. So I went up to the manager and said, Hank, Hank, you might as well bench me. I'm no good. I'm all washed up. Look, Casey, so the girl walked down on you. Try to forget her. I can't, Hank. I'm in love with Peg. And I miss Timmy. Yeah, well, this one day, try to forget, huh? It's the big game case. We need you. We need you with your old spirit. Give the fans their money's worth. They like their old cocky, swaggering Casey. Yeah, I guess I have been letting the fans down, Hank. And like you always said, boss, the fans are the most important part of the game. Okay, Hank, I'll swagger today plenty. But I wish I felt more like swaggering inside. 
Well, you all know what happened that day. It was a pretty famous game. It got that way because a newspaper man named Athair set it all down in sort of a poem. And here's exactly the way it happened. It looked extremely rocky for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to six with but one inning left. Play. And so when Cooney died at first and Burroughs did the same, a pallor read the features of the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go, leaving there the rest with a hope which springs eternal within the human breast. They thought if only Casey could get a whack at that, they'd put up even money with yours truly at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, and likewise so did Blake. The former was a pudding, and the latter was a fake. So on the stricken multitude, the death like silence sat. For there seemed but little chance that I would ever get to bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all. And the much despised at Blakey tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and we saw what had occurred, there was Blakey safe on second. And Flynn a hugging third. Casey, Casey, we want Casey. Then Casey, from the gladdened multitude Casey, went up a joyous yell. Casey, it bounded Casey, from the mountaintop and rattled down the dell. Stuck Casey, upon the hillside, Casey, rebounded on the flat. an easy manner as I stepped into my place, try to swagger like Hank told me, with a smile upon my face. And when, responding to the cheers, I lightly doffed my hat, no stranger in the crowd could doubt, t'was Casey at the back. Ten thousand eyes were on me as I rubbed my hands with dirt, five thousand tongues applauded. As I wiped them on my shirt And while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip Defiance came from Casey's eye, a steer from Casey's lip And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air And I just stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped that ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the bleachers black with people, there arose a solid roar, like the beating of the waves upon the stern and distant shore. Hey, kill him! Kill the umpire! Shouted someone from the stand, and it's likely they'd have done it if I hadn't. Raise my hand With a smile of Christian charity Great Casey's visit show I still the rising tumult And I bade the game go on Signal to the pitcher and again the spheroid flew, but yours truly still ignored it, and the umpire said, Right to Roar! Yelled the maddened thousands, and the echo answered, Roar! One scornful look from me, and then the audience was on. All right, Sneed, let her come. We saw his face grow stern and cold, we 
saw his muscles strain. And they knew that I just could not let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched with hate. I pound with cruel violence my bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball. And now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's ball. you down, you and the fans. Ah, forget it, Casey. Turn around and see who's here. Huh? Hi, Pop. Timmy. Oh, Timmy. When did you get back from Philadelphia? You shouldn't have run away from your mother. Well, Pop, we was there in Philadelphia having all that culture, and I guess even Mom got a little tired of it, because I caught her looking at your picture and crying. No kidding? So I went up to her and I said... Mom, no good ball player only gets one crack at the plate. Why even ball players who bat 400 strike out once in a while? And I guess she agreed, because she came back here with me. Is she here, Timmy? Right there in the stands. Hiya, Casey. Go on and kiss her, Pop. Hey, Pop. Hey, Casey. Hey, Jim. Bat her up. Hi, Casey. Hi, Mrs. Casey. Are you glad to see me? Glad? I'm going to take you in my arms, you strawberry blonde, you, and waltz you around the whole ballpark. Casey, he waltzed with the strawberry blonde, and the band played on. He'd glide across the floor with a girl he adored, and the band played on. His brain was so loaded, it nearly exploded. The poor girl would shake with alarm. He'd never leave the girl with the strawberry curls and the band played Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We had a lot of fun doing that, let me tell you. Dorothy Warren Show will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our heartfelt thanks to Herb Vigran, Jeffrey Silver, Marvin Miller, and to our entire company. Casey at the Bat, based on the famous poem by Ernest Thayer, was made into a musical by Lawrence and Lee. And now, here's lovely Dorothy Warren Show again. Believe me, you are a major league wife for a minor league ball player. <laughs> Why, thank you, Gordon. Tell me, what are we playing next week? Well, it's just a sleeper jump to Paris, Dorothy, and the show train will be pulling into the city on the Seine with some of the sweetest music ever written. 
Do you like uh, April in Paris? Oh, I simply love it. Well, that's just one of the songs we'll be singing together next Monday night, Dorothy. Uh, tell me, shall I um, polish up my French accent? Oui, oui? Oh, mais non, mais non. <laughs> <laughs> we both play a couple of Americans, Dorothy, who fall in love in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower. And we hope you'll all be with us a week from tonight for the premiere performance of another new operetta, Springtime in Paris. All aboard! Well, sir, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night and the premiere performance of Springtime in Paris, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Gordon McRae can soon be seen in Warner Brothers on Moonlight Bay. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Nadine Connor on The Voice of Firestone on NBC.